In this video, we're going to be using SAP Business Objects Data Services to take data from an XML file and load it into SAP HANA. So the first thing we need to do is to log into Data Services. So we do that by going to Start. We can access that from All Programs, Data Services, and we choose the Data Services Designer. Log in with your credentials. So for me, it's student and the password is welcome one and then it logs you into the system so we do this in our seventh tab which again is our file formats and we firstly need to import the XML's DTD so let me show you those files that I'm going to import I've got them in my library essentially I'm going to import an XML file and alongside an XML file, you have what's called a data type definition file, which describes the metadata which is in this file, which is in an XML file. So if I open up the XML file, this is what a typical XML file looks like. And the DTD will look like this. So this basically describes what is in the XML file. So to import, firstly we need to right click on DTD and select new. We give the DTD, DTD a definition name which I'm going to call it STS and then we select where the file is. So for me it's in my library within documents and it's the X, STS XML DTD file. Now within a DTD, because it's a hierarchical type of file, you have what's called a root element name. The root element name is essentially the highest part or the highest part of the hierarchy within that file. It's easy to find if again I go back to my DTD. Or let's go to the XML. And normally it's the one of the first or second um, columns rows on the list. So for me, the highest level is the material master list. So if I select material master list as the root element lane, then that's, that's all we need to change here. And then I click on OK. So if I double click on the DTD, this is what it looks like. So again, it simply describes the structure of that XML file. So the next thing we need to do is import the XML file. Now we actually do this during the job. So I'm going to create a new project called XML DTD. I'll then create a new job called XML DTD. And within the job, I'm going to create a data flow called XML DTD. So the first thing that we need to do is select that DTD as a data source and we drag it on the screen and we're going to make it an XML file data source. If I drill into the XML file or the DTD, within the DTD is where we choose which XML file we want to use. Normally the structure won't change but the data will so the idea with this is that you can have one DTD or definition file that describes multiple XML files. So I'm going to click from the drop down, click on select file and then again go to my library and I'll select that stsxml.xml file. That's all I need to do. So now I can click on save just to make sure we've got everything saved. I can close all my windows and I can go back to my data flow level. Now that we've actually selected the XML within the DTD, I, we have a magnifying glass. And I can select the magnifying glass and see the data within that DTD. So again, an XML file is a multi-hierarchical text file. So what it means is that I can drill within the data within that XML file. So for example here at the top level material master list we have an effective date. I can then drill into the material master list and then we get a list of products 
with their relevant columns. So whenever I see this icon, I can then drill into the column and I can see more information on that data. I can drill up and I can drill down by clicking on these icons as shown. So now that we know data services can read the XML and the DTD, now we can deal with getting that data into HANA. So the next step is to add a query transform and unnest the data. So I'm going to call this query transform unnest. Now this is a nice example of why we can use query transforms. Query transforms are not just from moving data from A to B. You can transform the data. And in this example, we're going to unnest all the data within the XML file. So I'm going to join the source to the unnest query transform and double click on that query transform. So to unnest is very straightforward. I simply drag the, the actual top part of the hierarchy to the right hand side. And to unnest each level, i.e. to create a join between each level so data integrate, data services understands the joins, I right click, I select make current, and then I right click and I select unnest. So I'm going to say unnest with subschemas. And again, I'm going to do that all the way down. So I'm going to make this level current. We can see it's unnested, so I don't need to do anything here, and so on and so forth. I'm just checking that everything is unnested. And again, I can see things are unnested correctly, all the way to the lowest level. Because essentially, we're, we're, go we're going to put this data all in one table. That's why we need to unnest all the columns. So that's a good reason why you would use a query transform. The next step is to add another query transform. But this query transform will just actually move the data. So it is possible to have multiple query transform next to each other doing different tasks. So this query transform is simply going to select all the data and then we're going to load it into HANA so I can just drag all those columns and place them on the right hand side. Here again we can add extra IDs. If I go back to my data flow and I click on the data, of course what we need to have is a primary key. If I click on the material master you can see that this key is unique so we can use this key. However within the query transform as I showed in other videos, we can generate a primary key as well. Of course, you must remember if we're loading to a column store table, we must have a primary key. So I must remember to click here, right click on the column and make this column a primary key. Again, if I'm loading to a row store table, then I don't need to do this. I can then validate that everything's okay in this query and I've got no errors. And I'll just double check in the unnest query that everything's okay. And again, I think I've got no errors. There we go. So if I go back to my data flow model, my data flow level, let's see what we've done. We've imported the DTD on the left hand side. We've specified the XML and we've linked that to the DTD. And we've validated that we can read the XML data, as you can see here. We've then unnested the data, which means essentially we've created joins between the multi-levels within the XML file. We've selected any columns that we require and we've chosen which column is the primary key. And of course, the last step is to load it into HANA. So again, I'm going to use a template table, place it on the canvas, and I'm going to call this simply XML DTD. And I'm going to load it into the STS schema and then click OK. So essentially here what we've done is we're using this part of the schema to extract data. We're doing this part, we're actually transforming data. And here we're loading data. So the last part is I just need to execute the job. So to do this again, I go to my job, right click and execute and click yes. Then I'll click on OK. Again, we're looking that the job completed successfully, as you can see it has. 
We're then looking at the monitor tab to see how many rows were transposed and we can see that six were moved across. And of course a good last check would be to go to the data flow and select the, the HANA table and click on the magnifying glass and we can see here that we've moved the data from an XML file and a DTD file and we've copied that data using multiple transforms into a target table which is in HANA. Again just to make sure of course we can launch the SAP HANA Studio and we can investigate just to make sure that that table has been created in the correct schema. So we expand our database, we expand our catalog, I expand the STS schema, and in tables I should have another table called XML DTD, which of course I can right click and click and do a data preview. So that's a simple example on how I can take data from XML and DTD formats how I can process it using SAP Business Objects Data Services and how I can load it into SAP HANA.